8051 and serial communication is the topic which we are going to study today. As you see, 8051 and serial communication, uh, the syllabus contains basically the basics of serial communication, uh, about a little bit about uh, what is serial communication and what are the advantages, disadvantages of serial communication and uh, how the uh, serial communication uh, uh, various protocols used and um, what are the different types of serial communication, uh, uh, what are the serial communication standards. So we will see in this uh, basics of the serial communication these all topics and then we will see a particular standard called RS-232 standard in this, uh, uh, in this syllabus and then uh, we will go through uh, one, uh, uh, one or two sample programs to transmit or uh, receive a message serially but Remember, this is the first time we are going to write a program in C. Okay. Also, we will see how to write this program in assembly also. So, there are three uh, major uh, sections in this serial communication as I mentioned here. Uh, uh, we will see basics today and then we will discuss about RS-232 tomorrow uh, along with the uh, starting of this, uh, uh, some of this program and we will continue this program in the third day. So, uh, also, when uh, since uh, this is the first time we are uh, studying this C programming, uh, we will study some of the uh, st uh, uh, programming concepts related to the serial pro uh, C programming, programming concepts related to the C programming also, we will see in this uh, section. So, uh, basics of serial communication. What is data communication? So, data communication, there are two types. So, communication itself means when we send the transmit, when we when we transfer an information from one place to the other place, uh, we will call it as communication, right? In, in terms of the uh, uh, communication in the electronics concerned. So there are two types of uh, uh, data communication. Uh, the first one is the parallel communication and the second one is the serial communication. So these are the two types of the data communication. So parallel communication means this involves basically the transmission of the data over several lines. So we will be transmitting the data through multiple lines and we will be transmitting it simultaneously. Uh, as you see, see in this figure, in this figure we can see uh, there is a sending device and there is a receiving device. So there are two devices. Uh, from the sending device we are transmitting through some transmission channel. Here there is a transmission channel. It could be a wired channel or a wireless channel. So you can see there are several channels here, several uh, transmission uh, medium is there like you know uh, that is that uh, if there are if the wires are the medium then there are eight wires in this diagram right so there are uh, several lines that's what is called several lines of uh, transmission and uh, at a time given time this information is transmitted simultaneously that means d0 to d7 is transmitted at a t given time okay it is uh, at a, in that time itself uh, for suppose for example at time t is equal to uh, some uh, uh, t naught that may be around uh, 1 microsecond. Within mic 1 microsecond all the data d0 to d7 will be completely transferred. Okay, That's what it means like. Um, that means the data is transferred simultaneously. That's what. Okay. Uh, often we will be using 8-bit, eight 8, eight, 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 eight data lines or more depending on the architecture of the processor uh, which, uh, which, uh, which deals with this data. However, um, this kind of communication we will be using when the distance between the sending device and the receiving device is very few. Okay, That means this distance, the distance between the sending device and if the receiving device is very few, then only we will be going with the uh, parallel data communication. That means this distance must be small. Okay, between. So uh, we cannot uh, uh, send this use this communication method to send it from one 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 country to the other country uh, or that kind of a long distances and all it is uh, very expensive that's the main reason why we don't go with this because it is very expensive for long distance communication because we know that uh, as we see that in this uh, communication uh, other than this eight eight data lines we also need the power line that is vcc and also the uh, uh, we will be requiring the ground that is uh, uh, ground also. So these are the other two more lines. So totally 10 lines are required to be connected between transmitter and receiver. So naturally you can imagine like how difficult it will be 
to lay this many lines between long distances because that will naturally will become expensive so that uh, we will generally avoid using this kind of parallel communication for a long distance communication so that is the parallel communication so so in order to uh, avoid uh, such kind of an expensive thing in certain situations we can uh, go with the serial data communication so what is serial data communication there are some advantages for parallel data communication as well as there are some disadvantages for parallel data similarly we have serial also we have advantages and disadvantages however what is serial data communication first we will see uh, this involves the transmission of the data bits on a single line one after the other so as this tells that there is a sending device here and there is a receiving device here and the communication channel that's a data channel or data will be transmitting through only one channel you can see here we have only one channel which is transmitting the or receiving the data now uh, since the data is uh, transmitted through only one channel naturally the data has to be uh, sent one after other okay that is the thing okay we will see how it is happening one after other the data has to be transmitted <coughs> Now this can be done, uh, when I say one after other, this can be done by breaking the characters of a word or a bit and then transmit sequentially along a line. That's the second point it says. So that, that means suppose if I wanted to send a character A, okay, uh, there, is a, 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 there is an ASCII code of this character A, I don't remember, I think it is 64 or something. So suppose if I wanted to send this character A to, uh, from the sender to the receiver, and 64 is a 8-bit data. So what we can do is we can just write it as 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. This is the data, 64. So that means in serial communication, we will be sending each bit by bit. That means we will send a 0 first, then we will send the next 0, then we will send this 1, then we will send 0, then 1, like this. We will be sending this 1 by 1. Okay. Whereas in parallel communication, this entire thing will be transmitted together. So this difference is there. So however, uh, this serial communication, even though we are sending it serially, uh, because of we are sending it serially, we know that the time taken will be more for serial communication. Whereas the advantage is that we need only one line to transmit. So since there is only one line to transmit, uh, it will be little inexpensive compared to the parallel communication because the number of lines are drastically reduced between the transmitter and the receiver and uh, that will be the advantage. So basically we will be using the serial communication for long distance data trans communication. So long distance data communication is where we will be using this uh, serial uh, data communication method. Okay. So now uh, when it comes to the uh, serial and parallel, so this will be one of the uh, understanding you will be requiring. Uh, what is the serial data and what is the parallel, what's the advantage, what's the disadvantage. So uh, when you take up this uh, serial data communication and parallel data communication, uh, uh, advantage and disadvantage we will see. In serial data communication, the advantage is it will be less expensive, right? Less expensive compared to parallel data communication right so this is the advantage which i am writing okay then the second advantage is the since uh, uh, yeah that's what the number of lines number of lines are less okay number of lines are less between the set, uh, transmitter and receiver and due to that fact factual factor only even this is become less expensive also okay Whereas, the, what is the advantage of, uh, what is the disadvantage of the serial communication? The disadvantage of the serial communication is um, the data uh, and one more, yeah, before disadvantage, one more uh, advantage of serial communication is we can send the data uh, for long distance communication, okay? Or we can use it for long distance communication. This is one of the advantages. So, the disadvantage is the data speed okay the data speed is low here because uh, we are sending instead of sending 8 bit per unit time we will be seeing 1 bit per unit time so to send suppose if you are using uh, the speed at which uh, if you are using uh, one 
bits per second is the speed one bits per second okay if this is the average speed of the communication then in case of a serial communication to transmit 8 bits we will be requiring 8 second 8 second we need to uh, we need for transmitting 8 bits okay because we are sending 1 bits per second is it so in a similar way if you see for parallel communication this this particular uh, 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 speed issue if we talk for the parallel communication uh, it will take uh, for transmitting 8 bits it will still take only 1 second remember the difference okay it takes 1 second for 8 bits whereas it takes 8 second for 8 bits for serial communication and in parallel it will take only 1 second because every second 8 bits are transferred because the speed is 1 bits per second right so since there are 8 channels for, e for through each channels each bit is tran transmitted or uh, uh, received so 8 bits are transmitted within 1 second so this is the uh, uh, yeah so this speed is low for uh, serial data communication is the disadvantage now when it comes to parallel communication what are the advantages yes this is an advantage for parallel communication if you see this uh, speed is good that's an advantage here right so when you see here uh, this the speed is good okay speed is good that's an advantage and uh, the uh, uh, disadvantage in this case is this is only for only for uh, small distance or uh, it is not suitable for long distance communication right okay it's only for small distances between transmitter and uh, receiver and it, it is little expensive okay these are the disadvantages so uh, uh, this is how uh, we can uh, uh, conclude the advantages disadvantages of serial and parallel data communications okay so now uh, what we will do we will go to the different types of serial communication so in serial communication we have got the two types we will call the first one is the synchronous data communication and the second one is the asynchronous data communication so asynchronous data communication okay um, so in synchronous data communication the receiver and the transmitter are synchronized uh, and the block of characters are transmitted along with the synchronization information so that is in the case of a synchronous data communication we will uh, see with respect to this diagram uh, whatever we are explaining here now and the second thing is it is used for high speed data transmission even in uh, serial we will be using it for high speed data transmission and also uh, both the transmitter and the receiver will operate at the same clock so these are the important points to be remembering uh, remembered while uh, talking about the synchronous data communication so what uh, we were discussing uh, just now is uh, into this if you look at this uh, diagram we have a transmitter and we have a receiver okay so this transmitter and receiver is connected bit through a single clock if you see there is one clock which is connecting the transmitter and receiver right so this one clock is controlling the transmitter as well as receiver that means that's the third point what is written here right it's the same clock it's the same clock okay the second thing is the synchronous uh, synchronization bit is also a part of the data so if you see this is uh, suppose if this is an 8-bit data yes this is an 8-bit data because 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 in that 8-bit data synchronization bit is also a part of this 8-bit data so that means that's a one more point that is uh, uh, the block of characters is transmitted along with the synchronization information okay and uh, so this will give you uh, gives right, this is used when it comes to the uh, uh, serial communication in a uh, uh, high speed serial communication if we need to achieve then we will go with a synchronous data communication and the second category of uh, the serial data communication is the asynchronous data communication and this is the one which is going to be uh, very very important for us because in our our 8051 we will be achieving mainly the asynchronous data communication okay so now uh, this asynchronous data communication as is mentioned it is character oriented data transfer and each character carries the information of the start and the stop bits okay so what does that mean 
that means if you take a if you look at this uh, uh, diagram here uh, we have uh, the data which is starting from uh, d0 to d7 and this data is appended with a start bit and a stop bit so we have a start bit and a stop bit and also along with this we will be having something called a parity and all the other uh, uh, header file, header bits all will be there but this is the very basic thing we are telling so there is a start bit there is a stop bit and there is a data bit so the totally suppose if you wanted to send a character which is of 8 bit size we are not only sending this 8 bit along with that we will be sending the start bit and so 8 bit of data plus the start bit plus the stop bit and if the header bits are required like parity and all that also we will be sending so uh, in asynchronous data communication this is one of the thing the second most important thing is that for asynchronous data transmission we will be using two different uh, we will be using different clocks for transmitter and receiver okay uh, so if you see the transmitter clock is set one here and the receiver clock is also uh, uh, separately given so there is no need of a clock synchronization between these two here as it is in the case of a synchronous synchronous if you see there was a clock synchronization required but in uh, asynchronous we don't need that so we have a uh, two different clocks for asynchronous data communication okay so remember about the synchronous and asynchronous data communications now in this uh, serial communication we have another uh, kind of uh, classification that is um, simplex half duplex and full duplex second uh, uh, important thing in the serial communication uh, that is the type of uh, transmission based on the direction and simultaneity okay the direction and simultaneity uh, means like whether we can transmit and receive and if you are transmitting and receiving can we do it simultaneously so these are the aspects so based on that we will uh, uh, categorize this into simplex half duplex and full duplex mode of transmission so this is the uh, next uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, classification and uh, we will see one by one what is simplex what is half duplex and what is full du full duplex and you see here in a simplex transmission the data is transmitted in only one direction that is uh, if you see normal radio communication like um, if you are listening to the FM channel and all I mean uh, through that radio you are not able to contact back to the uh, RJ or somebody right so through the radio I mean it's not possible I mean so that channel that the radio itself is a simplex transmission that is the radio is talking to you cannot talk back to the radio that's not possible uh, or uh, another example is that uh, uh, communication between a computer and a printer I mean uh, the basic printer nowadays there are printers available with uh, computer can read from the printer also but the basic printer I'm talking so this uh, computer uh, uh, will be sending some command to the printer and printer will print so that's a kind of a simplex uh, transmission uh, example now when it comes to the half duplex transmission the classic example is the walkie talkie so if you see that uh, in walkie talkie and all uh, either only one person can talk at a time so if one person talks other person will listen then the other person will uh, uh, this person will say some signal like uh, in English movies and all you can see like you know Roger that and all they, they will make such kind of a, a code word that yes my 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 uh, I have done with my talk now you can talk like that so that is called half duplex in this half duplex one can one can uh, uh, transmit and receive but at a time one of this only is possible either transmission or reception but in simplex we can only do the transmission only or we can do receiving only there is no both two-way communication is not possible half duplex is two-way but only one at a time and in full duplex what happens is uh, it is possible to simultaneously communicate that is the normal telephone communication what you are doing so you will be talking he will be hearing and he will be talking you will be hearing so in such cases uh, uh, it is a simultaneously we can uh, communicate between uh, the transmitter and the receiver so these are the 
three different uh, class uh, three different types of communication with respect to the direction and simultaneity so with this uh, now what we will do is we will go to the some of the important terms used in serial communication so please remember throughout our uh, explanation we will be talking about only one type of communication that is asynchronous okay asynchronous serial communication okay asynchronous serial communication uh, so just to understand what is this asynchronous serial because since we are going to uh, deal with this in our uh, uh, further chapters uh, be aware that uh, what are the uh, basic characteristics of this asynchronous communication we know that there is a, a, a different clock right that's the first thing different clock um, different clock for transmitter uh, as well as uh, receiver okay this is the one of the characters and second characteristic is the character the data or the character okay uh, which is to be transmitted contains not only the data but also it will contain some of the headers like a start bit stop bit as well as some of the uh, information such as parity etc okay so these are the uh, uh, important topics when it comes to the asynchronous serial communication so we will see some of the terms which is used in asynchronous serial communication the first one is the baud rate then we will talk about what is parity and data bits what you know already and what is start bit and what is stop bit so with this uh, we will uh, conclude at today's section so let me explain one by one what are these things okay so when it comes to the uh, baud rate what is baud rate okay uh, baud rate is basically the definition of baud rate is it is the uh, number of signal changes per second okay number of signal changes per second that is baud rate so basically uh, what is baud rate it is the rate at which the bits are transmitted and the baud is also expressed in bits per second but it is not always true uh, because sometimes if the bits are represented by a different num uh, signaling uh, signaling system then uh, baud rate and bit rate will not be the same also but in binary number binary system mostly it will be the same yeah the third point what it says is the data transfer rate of a given computer depends upon the communication ports incorporated into the system yes see a computer what we are using may be of a very high speed computer but uh, what is the data transfer depending on what kind of ports like if you are using a serial port in a computer then the serial usb suppose usb you are using you know usb speed is uh, like you 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 see the natural uh, normal uh, transmission of usb 2.0 and all maybe you will not get more than 10 megabits megabytes per second 10 mbps whereas uh, when it comes to the uh, transferring between the uh, usb with uh, with a peripheral uh, that's external hard disk you can see it can go up to around uh, 35 to 40 mbps sometimes it can, it may go up to uh, 100 mbps uh, i mean maximum not more than that so this this the speed of the data transmission is not depending on the speed of the computer but the speed of the port that's what uh, this talks about okay so this is about the board then when it comes to the parity so this parity what do you mean by parity parity this bit makes it possible to do an easy check for errors during the transmission okay uh, there are three types of uh, uh, parities no no parity odd parity and even parity okay so mark mark and space that is a different the terminology is used here i will tell you basically we will be uh, talking about the uh, what is this parity bit and i will tell you an example about an uh, even parity and how this even parity is going to track or check the error in the data transmission so now the you know what is data bit so i don't want to uh, give much uh, idea about what is data bit but in uh, normal serial communication the data bit will be uh, uh, in the form of uh, uh, 2 power n like the 8 bits or sometimes it can be 7 bits or 16 bits so uh, it, it, it basically contains the data the information it will be in that particular data bit then uh, we have a start bit so the start bit is the bit which is sent before the data so one one when you are sending the when when you are sending the data between transmitter and receiver so the transmitter will send so we have a transmitter we have a 
receiver the transmitter will send the start bit first so first it will send the start bit then it will send the data bits and along with some header information like parity and all then at the end it will send a stop bit so this is how the start will reach receiver first then followed by the data and at the end it will receive stop bit so the start bit will be the beginning of the data bit normally the start bit will be a logic zero bit which is of the same length of one data bit okay same length of one data bit so if the data if suppose for example if the speed is 8 uh, bits per second okay if the speed is 8 bit per second in one second in one second how many bits are transmitted in one second eight bits are transmitted that means to transmit one bit we need one by eight second right that means the uh, one bit size is one by eight second so uh, normally the start bit also will be the size of the data bit that is one if it is this same example if you say one by eight second will be the data bits uh, start bit size also but the start will, will be a logical zero all the time so the moment it is seeing a zero in the beginning then uh, it will assume that whatever is followed by that first zero will be your data okay then the data uh, uh, data size has to be defined earlier so the system the receiver will know that after zero there will be suppose the data is uh, de uh, defined as 8 bit data then it is uh, the receiver will know that after the start bit the remaining 8 bits will be the data bits only okay like that this information will be known to the receiver and after the 8 bits whatever is appearing it could be the parity bit or at the end you will be getting a stop bit so the next we will see what is the stop bit so stop bits means it could be either one data bit once it's the same as of the data bits or twice the data bit size so a stop bit will be either the same size of the data bit or the double the size in the sense the time taken okay double the size of the data bits 